Hi, so in this tutorial we're going to give a brief introduction into finding value drivers uh, by identifying those items on the financial statements that don't get drivers. Uh, basically, if it's a subtotal, right, like gross profit, net income, total assets, you don't give it a driver, you just calculate it as the sum of the other things, right? So to take a couple of examples, sales revenue you'll forecast. Right? If you've got a firm with two or three income streams, you will add those all up to get to total revenue. So total revenue will be equal to all other categories of revenue. Right? So I'm going to gray it out because it doesn't get a driver. I'll just take a few of these. Um, direct costs, we're going to forecast that as a percentage of sales. Depreciation and amortization, we'll forecast that as a percentage of fixed assets at cost. Right? But gross profit is going to be revenue less direct costs and depreciation and amortization. So its value is going to depend on the forecasted values of these three items, right? Or these three items. So we'll go back to selling general and administrative. We'll calculate a driver for it, for restructuring, remediation, and impairment. And then the sum of those two things, SG&A and RR&I, and equal total indirect operating cost. If it's a sum of something else on these sheets, it doesn't get its own driver, right? Operating income, gross profit, less total indirect operating costs, it's a sum, it doesn't get an item. We'll forecast interest expense um, as a percentage of debt, total debt, we'll forecast interest income as a percentage of cash and short-term securities. Then we'll add those things together as to become total non-operating income. It doesn't get a driver, right? Earnings before tax, will be operating income less non-operating expenses doesn't get a driver taxation we calculate it as a percentage of earnings before tax so it gets a driver net income doesn't get a driver right because that's just going to be earnings before tax less taxation we already calculated our dividend payout ratio so on my income statement if I take a look at it I'm only going to be needing drivers for sales revenue direct costs depreciation and amortization, selling general and administrative, restructuring, remediation and impairment, interest expense and interest earned, and taxation, the income tax rate, right, which we already calculated that as part of WAC. On the balance sheet, things that are subtotals would be cash equivalents and short-term investments, right? Because it's cash and equivalents plus whatever you have for short-term investments. Hershey's doesn't have that, but your firm might total current assets. Here's a tricky one. Gross plant property and equipment is going to get is not going to get a driver even though it's what we use to calculate depreciation expense. So it's going to be a sum total and accumulated depreciation is also going to be a sum total. The item as far as plant property and equipment, fixed assets, the one that gets a driver is net plant property and equipment. More on that later. Intangibles gets a driver, other gets a driver, total assets is just a sum of all of those assets. Accounts payable and accrued expenses, check these three out. Just to make it really easy on you, Mergent has, in their infinite wisdom, put accounts payable accrued expenses and then accounts payable plus accrued expenses that's the subtotal item and it happens to be above the two items that it's adding together right loads of fun doesn't get a driver current debt gets a driver total current I'm sorry current debt gets a driver total current liabilities does not get a driver long-term debt and leases does, pensions, other, total, boom. Basically if it says total or if it's the sum of two things added together, no driver. Common share capital. If you take a look at your common share capital and it's the same every year like Hershey's is, then we're going to let it be equal to that same number every year in the forecast and it does not get a driver. If you've got numbers that vary, um, you can forecast it as a percentage of sales. Additional paid in capital, I'm going to give that a driver or, um, and it might show up as a growth rate. Retained earnings is a sum of 
previous year's retained earnings and whatever we don't pay out as dividends, accumulated other comprehensive income, treasury stock, total equity, total liabilities and equity. So we're actually only looking at many fewer drivers than or many fewer drivers than items we need to forecast because each item on here has to show up in your forecast. You only need drivers for the ones that aren't subtotals. The interesting exception to that is going to be cash. Cash does not get a driver. And the reason cash doesn't get a driver is because we use it as what's called the plug. And the plug is the value that you let vary. You'll let cash be whatever it needs to be in order to make total liabilities and to total liabilities and equity, right? needs to balance with total assets. You'll notice here that total assets and total liabilities and equity, they both have, they have the same value in every single year. Well, you're going to need to have that too, right? Your balance sheet needs to balance. So total assets will equal total liabilities plus equity. Well, they're not just gonna magically equal one another, unfortunately for us, but fortunately for us, we can use cash. We can set the cash value on our balance sheet to whatever it takes in order to make them balance, right? That works as long as the balance of cash does not become negative. If you've got a company that's performing kind of poorly, you might find you've got negative cash. So then our other possible option down here with long-term debt and leases what color did I use? We're going to call this plug option number two, right? So we'll try to plug with cash. If we can't plug with cash, we'll plug with debt. In the short run, however, we will give debt a driver. All right. So take a minute and look over your spreadsheet. Identify everything that's a subtotal of another item, and you can kind of gray it out, right? Those items don't get value drivers. Then we're going to go through in the next tutorial the items that do get value drivers, and we'll start by identifying those items where we can use our percentage of sales to forecast them. All right, good luck.